Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, minimum remove to make valid parentheses. We're given a string S made up of parentheses characters and lowercase English characters. Now our task is basically to remove the minimum number of parentheses characters from the input string to make the string valid. And by valid, they kind of just mean the valid parentheses problem. Like we can't have more open parentheses than we have closing parentheses to match them. And of course we can't have extra closing parentheses either. And we're gonna go more in depth into this because actually just understanding this is how you solve the problem. This uh, explanation here is kind of similar to the last couple days problems. So it's all about considering the example. So let's take a look at this first one. We have some characters, elite, we have the parentheses here, we have another character here, character here, and some characters here. So just to quickly look at the solution to make sure that you understand the problem, basically the only parentheses that we removed is this one over here. And that made this valid because you can see we have one open, another open, this one closes this one, and then this one closes the one over here. But there actually is another solution as well. We could keep this one if we want to, and we could remove this one. We still have two closing parentheses and two open ones to match them. So not only is the number of parentheses important, we have to have the same number of open as we do close, but the relative order of them does matter as well. Consider if, you know, this closing parenthesis over here actually went over here. Then we really don't have a choice. We have to remove this closing parenthesis because there must be a open parenthesis to match it. And in this case, there's not. So we have to remove this one. You know, technically we could remove this one and then this one as well. And this is also valid, but recall that they said we remove the minimum number of parentheses. So that's why we don't do that. After removing this one, the string is valid. So that's what we return. This problem is similar to most parentheses problems, but the only annoying part is that manipulating a string like this is kind of annoying. So the way we're gonna do this is actually considering this as like an array. So each character is gonna be considered as part of an array. And that is generally gonna make the solution more efficient because we can push and pop to an array in constant time. Whereas with a string, if we were to actually delete a character in the middle of this string, that would be an O of n time operation. Even just manipulating a string in general is an O of n time operation. So that's what we're gonna keep an eye out for. So we're gonna keep track. We're gonna iterate over this input from left to right. We're gonna keep track of the count of open parentheses. So every time we see an open parenthesis, we add one to our account. So by the time we get here, we're gonna add one. We're gonna be maintaining a list and for every single character that's not a parenthesis character, we're gonna go ahead and add it to the list. So at this point, we'd add L, E, E, then we get to an open parenthesis. Then we're gonna add that as well. And we're gonna keep track of the count and you're gonna notice that there are really only two ways that we are gonna have any invalid parentheses in the first place. And it's actually pretty simple. Either we have a surplus of closing parentheses, which is what's gonna happen in this case, right? Like as we iterate over this, we see we have a plus one, plus one, then we minus one from the closing parentheses, minus one again, okay, now we're back at zero. And then we get to the final closing parentheses, minus one again. So we don't want our count to be negative by the end of it. And in fact, we don't want our count to ever be negative because we can't recover from this. Look, we're going from left to right. Okay, we have a surplus. We have two open parentheses. It's possible for these to be closed in the future, right? And in this case, that's exactly what happens. We get these two closing parentheses, which close these. So that's fine. But when we see a third closing parentheses, it doesn't really matter what happens in the future because we know for sure there aren't enough open parentheses to match that. So the easy observation to make is anytime we have a surplus of closing parentheses, parentheses like this one, we skip it. So this is how we solve this first example. This one is actually a relatively simple one. This is what we're going to do. Keep going. Okay. Open parentheses, add it character, add it some more characters here, open parentheses. And then these two closing ones will match it. Our count never goes negative. It does hit zero at this point though. So we'll add everything up until there. Boom, 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 boom. And then D E as well. And then finally, when we get here, it's a closing parenthesis. Our count is already zero. Therefore we skip 
this closing parenthesis. We know for sure we skip it. If there were more closing parentheses after that, we'd skip those ones as well. Okay, so this is the easy example, I think, where we have extra closing parentheses. Now, the harder one is let's change this to instead of having the closing one here, let's add the open parenthesis over here. So now, same thing, we keep track of the count plus one, plus two, plus three, and then, whoops, uh, the plus three is here, and then minus one, minus two. Okay, so now our count is one. We have one open parenthesis. We keep going through the whole string and we stop. So we pretty much copy all of this into the output. That's fine, but we have an extra open parenthesis. So the only question is, how do we handle having extra open parentheses? We don't know if we'll have extra until we get to the end of the list. So this problem is hard to solve in a single pass, though it is possible with multiple passes to still solve this in linear time. Let me show you how. The only question we're trying to answer is when we have extra open parentheses, how do we remove them? Assume it's possible maybe we could just iterate over this and filter them, right? But the question is, which ones do we filter? Does it matter which one we remove, this one, this one, or this one? Well, in this example, it doesn't seem like it matters. If I remove this, then we're still good here. If I remove this, we're still good. If I remove this, we're still good. And the reason for that is because the relative order, all the open parentheses come first and then the closing ones come after. So it doesn't matter because we know this one could map to this one, this one could map to this one, and this one can map to either of those as well. So whichever one of these we remove, it still works out, but that's not always the case. And this is kind of the key observation to make because none of the examples they show us are going to illustrate that. What if instead I put an open parenthesis at the end? Does that change our example? Sorry about my handwriting. I hope uh, it's clear that this is a parenthesis. Does this change our example at all? Which one of these three do we remove now? Is it possible for us to choose to remove this one? Nope, because look, open, close, close. That's invalid. We can't remove this one either. We only are allowed to remove the last parenthesis. Okay, but is that always going to be the case? Let's look at a slightly different example. And for now, I'm actually just going to stop considering like the regular characters because they're not super important. Suppose we have open parenthesis here, closing, open, open, and close. Now, once again, we do have multiple choices. We can't remove this one, but we can remove this one, or we can remove this one over here. But are you kind of noticing a pattern? It seems like we're always allowed to remove the last open parenthesis. And it could be a different example. Suppose we have three open parentheses here. Once again, we have choices. We can actually remove any of these two. We have to remove two of them. We can do any of them. These two, these two, we could even keep the middle one. But my point is we're always allowed to remove from the end of the open parentheses. And why is that? What's the intuition behind that? If you're still not convinced, let me kind of make an argument to convince you. Either it's gonna be a case like this where we don't have a choice. We have to remove the last open parenthesis because there aren't any closing parentheses that come after it. Okay, in that case, we start from the end and start removing those. But even in the case where we have a choice, we still choose to remove from the end because either we have to remove the last one, like how I showed over here, like that's the case, we have to remove the last one. The other case is we don't have to remove this. We do have a choice, but even in that case, it's perfectly fine to remove the last one because even if it's possible that this has a closing parenthesis that comes after it, then therefore there's a 100% chance that every one of these also has a closing parenthesis that come after it, whether it's these two or whether it's this one. So therefore, by removing this, we still have a match for these guys. But that's not gonna be the case here. Like if I have an open parenthesis here, when I remove 
This one, I don't know for 100% sure that there's a closing parenthesis that comes after this. That's why we always choose to start from the end and start removing those. Because keeping these ones gives us the most flexibility that there are going to be some closing parentheses that come after them. You might be thinking of a different example like this one. Let's say we have two closing and then to open. Just remember the first phase of the algorithm that I showed you. When we would iterate through this string, what we would say is we have a deficit. We have a closing parenthesis. That's not what we want. So we immediately remove that. We have a closing parenthesis. That's not what we want. We immediately remove that. For the open ones, we keep this. We keep this because we don't know what comes after it. But by the time we get here, we see, okay, we stopped and we have two extra closing parentheses. So now from here, we would start at the end, remove, and remove the two extra and therefore our string would be valid even an empty string is considered valid so that's the solution in terms of the implementation it's going to be a little tricky so i'll save that for the code i will say that the solution is o of n time and o of n space let's check it out so uh, these are like the notes that i took that helped me solve the problem but i will say this is a kind of a tricky one if you're a beginner so uh, let's get into it I'm going to just declare a result, and that's kind of going to be what I was talking about earlier, like how we are going to go through every character in the string and then add them to the result, except we're going to be skipping any extra closing parentheses. So for us to do that, we have to keep track of how many we have. So this count is going to represent how many extra open parentheses that we have. So there's a few cases here. If the character is an open parenthesis, even if we have extra, we are still going to add that. So we're going to say result, append to the result, this character, and we're going to increment the count of parentheses, the count of open parentheses by one. Now, the other case is if this is a closing parenthesis. Now, a closing parenthesis is also fine, assuming we have an extra, at least one or more extra open parentheses to match it. So let's check if this end, if our count is greater than zero, then go ahead and add this character as well, this closing parenthesis. But we do have to decrement the count in that case. Now, the last case you might think is, well, if it's neither an open or a closing parenthesis, but just remember the way we coded this up, it's possible it could have been a closing parenthesis, but this was false and we don't want to consider that case. So we just want to say here else if the character is not a closing parenthesis. This is the case that handles characters that aren't parentheses. So here we would just take that character and add it to the result. Okay, now we filtered out all the extra closing parentheses, but now we still have some extra open parentheses perhaps. So technically you could put an if statement here if you wanted to, but I'm not gonna do that because the code will still work out regardless. But what I'm gonna do here is filter these and that's what I'm gonna call this. Maybe you have a better name for it, but this is going to go through the characters of what we just built and we're gonna go through them in reverse order for reasons I mentioned earlier. We wanna remove the extra open parentheses starting from the end. So we're gonna go through every character in the result and we're gonna do it in reverse order. So in Python, you can do that kind of like this. This is basically creating a copy of this array in reverse order. And so iterating over that, we want to know if that character is an open parenthesis and if our count is greater than zero, then skip that character, but also decrement the count by one. Otherwise, we keep the character. So this is pretty simple. Otherwise, we just say filtered, append, whatever that character happened to be. So we will remove this many extra open parentheses starting from the end of result. That's what this is doing. That's why I'm calling it filtered. But again, you can call it whatever you want. Now, the only problem is we iterated over this thing in reverse order and then appended the characters to this. So technically our result right now is in reverse order. So we can fix that simply by reversing filtered. And we can do that again like this in Python. So now we reversed that array, but we don't want to return an array. We want to return a string. So we can take all the substrings in here and join them together in Python like this. This is the delimiter, an empty string. Join every substring in filtered and then return the result. So this is the entire code. Let me just run it to make sure that it works. 
As you can see, it does. It's pretty efficient. I will quickly mention that if you're looking for a more concise way to write this code, there definitely are some ways. If you want to comment your solution below, you definitely can. But I know it's the beginning of the month and there's probably a lot of beginners watching this. So I wanted to keep it at least a little bit verbose to make it a bit more understandable. But you can let me know if that's helpful or maybe it's unhelpful and you just want to see the most concise solution. But uh, if you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.